Hello citizens, it's Dirty Dodger and welcome back to another episode on my channel. For those of you that aren't aware, my channel is primarily based around science fiction and gaming and looking at the development of Star Citizen and its ever-evolving universe. So today then, we are going to have a look at some of the kind of behind the scenes technology that Chris Roberts and his team have been using during the production of the um, Star Citizen and Squadron 42 to bring us the most lifelike character and facial animations. Its aim is to bring, us bring the characters to life and provide an increased level of fidelity and immersion never before witnessed by any other game. Remember this game is 100% crowdfunded as of today standing at 2 million citizens so all of this is a result of us the backers and the fans for Star Citizen and without a doubt without us none of this would have been possible. The funds uh, that have been raised for the guys that are subscribed um, and purchased kind of content for the game, uh, those funds have helped Chris Roberts not only kind of uh, fund the game itself, uh, but also kind of push him towards using some of that money to develop um, his own kind of leading edge, leading edge technology um, that they need to help push the kind of uh, facial animation and, and motion capture, uh, take it to kind of uh, new heights and, and push it beyond the modern day boundaries. If you're like me, a massive fan of the Wing Commander then, you're probably just as excited to get your hands on the first chapter of Squadron 42, which I'm hoping we will see a release later this year. If you haven't already, uh, I've got a video uh, reference what we kind of expect expecting to see from Squadron 42 which I made last year and I was expecting it's at least it's released last year after a couple of hints that it was going to release in 2017 but we are now aware that uh, Chris Roberts and the Foundry 42 guys are continuing to polish the game for its release date which I'm hoping we'll see uh, sometime later on uh, this year in 2018. Okay starting with the motion capture then or mocap uh, it started back as far back as the early 2000s where they used it to kind of capture movements for animated characters in movies mainly. Uh, since then it's found to be used more and more forever bringing much finer detail and capture quality to bring even better lifelike animation uh, to characters. Uh, I think one of the movies that, which you'll probably uh, remember back before the Planet of the Apes uh, where they used a lot of motion capture for the apes uh, and so just kind of like general stuff like that. Uh, it's basically achieved by uh, placing tiny little ball sensors on a kind of suit uh, or an object which is then picked up by a series of cameras or sensors uh, in and around the, uh, the kind of uh, shooting area. Uh, these cameras are usually placed around the studio to pick up the movement of the person or the object which is then obviously analysed by the computer. Uh, and is used to produce a 3D model relative to the markers on the positions. So if you imagine um, uh, a 3D model of a skeleton of sorts, you'll have the uh, kind of balls on the joints and the relevant parts of the, uh, the body. So when they move, you'd pick up that uh, movement and detect it as like a bend in the leg, a bend in the elbow, or a turn of the head and stuff like that. The animation, the animation department then, then generally kind of uh, like has like layered meshes and then they put kind of skins and textures over top of this kind of um, this uh, 3D model uh, on top of this skeleton to kind of generate a look and a feel that they want for the final product. So if you imagine a person being generated, they'll have like the, the prominent points with the balls, they then kind of layer the, the exoskeleton or the kind of the skin layer of the person over top of that. I mean, it's just a case of adding the finer details and textures and shading and all the rest of it. And what you get is this kind of lifelike uh, character so game developers these days now are using more of this technology to bring the characters within the game uh, to life and Star Citizen is no exception as we uh, saw early, or heard earlier sorry um, uh, Chris Roberts has not only gone above and beyond to use uh, the most advanced technology in facial uh, recognition and the motion capture he's now only he's now uh, spent some of the money that he has received through the the backers and uh, the funds and stuff to kind of now generate his own technology to take that beyond what the modern day world has. So back in 2013, CIG reached their stretch goal of $10 million, which they pledged to build their own motion capture studio to improve the, the quality of Star Citizen and Squadron 42's cutscenes. Uh, this coupled along with the 5.5 million stretch goal uh, for a professional mocap for Squadron 42 has really helped bring the game to another level of motion capture uh, never before seen in any game. Squadron 42 has such a vast array of A-list actors, one of which includes a man who relied on a whole movie with motion capture, which was Andy Serkis. As I said, he played the, uh, the ape in Planet of the Apes. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, he also played Gollum in the Lord of the Rings uh, series of films as well. 
So not only has Chris Roberts opted to use the best technology, but he's also using the best actors for the job as well to really kind of uh, bring these characters to life and make them feel uh, as alive and they're given their own kind of unique personalities as well. So he's got the, the top actors in there as well. All with the simple aim really of just creating a kind of sense of connection to the ship, to its crew, and just kind of really bring us, the gamers, uh, the players, the best level of immersion imaginable. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my uh, video on the Squadron 42, which will also be linked below, as uh, linked below, as I've already mentioned. Facial capture them, hitting yet another stretch goal in the same year. This time, 22 million. CRG use some of their crowdfunded money to research their own technology for the facial capture systems, which you'll see in some of the videos uh, very shortly. Uh, and combined with that motion capture studio for the cap uh, character animation side, uh, they, they now also have some of the best technology and software to allow them to capture the actors' faces and overlay their whole array of expressions and animations onto the in-game character face as well. The actors go through a process of scanning about 90 odd expressions which utilise all of the facial muscles. Uh, the high res images from those uh, those kind of uh, expressions uh, that have been captured are then run through a piece of software which is used to kind of analyze the skin surface, help identify uh, any similarities between paired scans, so similarities between uh, muscles being used um, throughout the different expressions. And through the thousands of similarities found between the pairs of the images then, uh, they're then used to, used to create blend shapes on the facial topology, basically kind of adding uh, animation or kind of lifelike features to the face. Uh, the blend shapes then being a method of a 3D computer animation which is used to animate realistic human expressions. So after that then they are reviewed for any unwanted motion in the face model uh, before being made into a face rig which is, which is essentially a facial puppet of the in-game character. Not only are they ensuring that the characters are animated correctly but they have something extra to really kind of make them uh, look and feel uh, so much more lifelike you know such as uh, the stretching uh, skin uh, and stuff like that so on a much smaller scale then we are talking about things such as like I said skin stretching wrinkles uh, the blood flow as well so obviously if you imagine when a face tightens up some of the blood uh, disappears so it goes a little bit whiter when it relaxes it comes back uh, or red and just general kind of movement and person of the skin and the lips and and all those kind of little tiny um, uh, facial muscles uh, that we we don't really kind of pick up on a day to day for the cast and crew on squadron 42 uh, they've used this technology to not only animate the character but to also capture the performances of the actors themselves as they move around this kind of uh, mock uh, ship and interact with objects they've picked all that up as well they basically do this by tracking multiple points on the face and the actors ranging from creases, lips, teeth and eyes and then they transfer that data onto the character uh, again onto this kind of in-game uh, face rig. Certain areas of the face though, uh, capture of the face capture rig specifically monitor movement on that part of the face but also monitors how it moves relative to another part of that face. For example, when you smile your eyes will kind of tighten up and get closer together such as uh, things like that. So they put all this data together to accurately recreate realistic facial animations used for speech and expression. One of the last things added is the blood flow maps, uh, which obviously I mentioned earlier, and the animated wrinkles. So if you can imagine as they, they smile, the, the, uh, the, kind of, uh, the cheeks will tighten, the blood will move, you'll get wrinkles in your eyes and your eyes will tighten up as well. Uh, it's just these kind of little small uh, small details that really kind of make this uh, the facial animation rig kind of come to life, make the character look real. One example of this would obviously, like I just said, like the lips uh, being lighter or darker, depending on if they're stretching or person. And again, that kind of um, the small uh, the small cameras that pick up the muscles, which will determine secondary muscle movements, such as around your forehead and your eyes. Or you could also say perhaps during um, the darkening of a nose, if it scrunches up. Uh, and obviously the wrinkles associated there around the eyes. They can use up to three wrinkle map textures combined with blood flow maps to give up to a total of 44 different areas on the face to create a unique kind of wrinkle and expression. 
Uh, let's not forget obviously the pupil animation as well where they've added animation with reaction to light sources so if you can imagine you're in a slightly lighter area the pupils will be a little bit smaller and if you go to a darker area you'd see them kind of increase in size as well. As you can imagine as a result of all of those being compiled together the data file for the character is extremely large uh, but in the video it mentions there that obviously once uh, it's transferred into the game engine it is basically all compressed down to a manageable size uh, manageable size sorry whilst ensuring that the quality of the capture and the detail is retained uh, so that we get the best animation without sapping too much of our computer's resources to generate in game with all that said, uh, we've covered uh, basically uh, very shortly the basics for the motion capture and the facial animation. Let's have a little look at all of that work put together. We have to use the power of human innovation to reclaim these so-called red systems and strike back at the enemy. This will not be an easy fight. It will cost us new resources, new credits, new lives. Well, some of you may be asking why I undertake such a thing, and I, I can tell you in one word: victory. For if there's one thing the Vandal has taught us. It's that without victory, there can be no survival! Guys, if you've learned anything or enjoyed watching this video, then please make sure you hit the like and also the subscribe button, which is just below the video on the right hand side, the little red button there. Um, uh, you can also subscribe to get future content from myself. If you've got any questions, comments or queries, pre please feel free to write them down in the section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and like I said, please do hit that like and subscribe. Also, make sure you check me out on uh, Twitch, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, if you can, uh, give me a follow and a like. Uh, if you share my passion for gaming and science fiction. Uh, I've also got a bunch of other videos as well, make sure you check out the playlist. We are having a look at the 10 year anniversary for the trilogy game Dead Space, absolutely fantastic game. I've just finished the Dead Space 1 walkthrough, talk through, just kind of general chit chat and play. Uh, make sure you check that out, uh, hit me a like, I'll be doing a Dead Space 2 very very shortly. Hope to see you in the verse guys.